Are Infernal Guard with Fireglaives any good? They're good. They're interesting. Do you need them? That's a more complicated question, so let's dive in. Please like, subscribe, and consider donating through my coffee page. I need your support. So, Fireglaives take a pretty late game building that's a luxury as far as gold is concerned, plus hefty armaments to unlock more of them in the Hellforge. Moreover, it's entirely arguable that the Blunderbuss units are entirely adequate to get you through the entire game without touching Fireglaives at all. They're that powerful. Yes, they have limitations, and I've been over them extensively in my video on them. Thank you for watching it. But Fireglaives are... How do I put this? Spicy. The footage you see here is from the skirmish with AI, but just like I saw in some videos, I used Pike and Shot's square formation to deal with the cavalry. Seriously, it was too much for my Overseer Lord, he was routed pretty early on. Then my frontline unit routed, but I sent four Great Swords and four Reichsguard, plus the General of the Empire after this force of one Overseer and four Fireglaives, just to see. And lo and behold, the Fireglaives won. It was brutal, but they won. I wasn't some great general here, or trying to be. Fireglaives have the same armor as Infernal Guard units generally, but without the shields. The Fireglaive weapons themselves have a very small bonus versus large, but combined with the charge defense versus large, the Reich's Guard just can't do much against them. Footage in the latter part of this video shows Stone Trolls attacking in bulk, which gives a different look, since they have pretty decent armor, but Fireglaives don't really care. Of course, anything vulnerable to fire is going to hate these guys. It's flaming attacks, but also armor-piercing at Thunderer-style range. That means they substantially outrange the blunderbusses. I'm explaining this because the lack of shields is a big deal, making them much more vulnerable to ranged fire in theory. But the high leadership, high armor, high cohesion, those are advantages. Furthermore, they have a very good rate of fire and aren't they aren't as all or nothing as the blunderbuss units. What you get with the Fireglaives, therefore, is consistency. They give you greater comfort in being able to whittle down things at range. With Guard Mode, they can even keep up at least some shooting while engaged in melee against a lot of units. They hurt whatever they hit, but they're not impossible to beat, since with enough wailing on them with Greatswords, that does it here in my example, but they are stiff. Large opponents do not bully them so easily, Small opponents are still fighting Infernal Guard, with combat stats that put most early units to shame. Also, they have a full 25% fire resistance in case you have it to drop a magical bomb. Where's the weakness? What weakness do they even have? Well, like I said, they are easier to wipe out with sustained focus fire than blunderbusses. Several Dark Shard units could decimate them one by one, but of course, Dark Shards can do that with most things in the game if you let them. It's just a lot less efficient against things with silver shields, from skeleton spearmen up to blunderbusses and, and chaos dwarf warriors. But you should bring some kind of plan to deal with them. Square formations are fun to test, but come on, any faction with artillery is going to mess with them. And I also want to talk about campaign because you can get even more even. How about this? What if you use stock and vanguard deployment and get three units of fireglaives into the back of an enemy force? If you have any distraction for the enemy, they can set up and utterly annihilate nearby artillery and start chewing through everything else. All of a sudden, you have commando units that don't have to get within stabby stabby range before opening fire. No warning, no mercy. Fireglaives are wonderful tools for controlling the battlefield and dominating particular spaces. It's too bad they're slow, but you can put them on flanks and deal with armored cavalry and flying units. You can put them in the center and dare the enemy to charge. You can put them in the enemy's rear and dare the enemy to turn around and save its artillery and arches. And maybe you can throw in a blunderbuss unit to deliver unholy hell unto anyone who dares charge or lock. Fireglaze are not an issue of need. They are an issue of playstyle, of making a powerful roster even more powerful and giving you less to worry about in one area so that you can micro in another. That's their real value on the battlefield. They're not completely worry-free, but they're not as finicky as their blunderbuss counterparts with the all-or-nothing stuff. One final word, I've spoken about the synergy of the lore of fire with blunderbuss units. Not that this doesn't apply to fireglaives, but they don't need to have flaming attacks slapped on. 
that's already present. Aside from wanting magical attacks, which you can get from the Hellforge if need be, I'd say the lore of Hashut presents a lot of synergy with the Fire Guys. Try it out. See what happens. Take care.